So as some of you know, I bought an apartment this summer here in Valencia in Spain. And as I wanted to work on my skills to talk in front of the camera and also I would like to work on my editing skills, I thought why not just make a video out of this and share my progress. Before I bought this apartment, I'm actually here in the living room. I had a look on many apartments. I think I visited around 30 or 35 apartments. And this is definitely a step that I can recommend to you to look as many apartments as possible because with each apartment you get a new reference point and a new learning if this apartment is a good investment or not. Among the 30 apartments that I visited, there were definitely like three, four really viable ones, like obviously good investments. But as I have never bought an apartment before, I didn't have the guts to just like go in and say, yeah, this is it, I'll, I'll do this. But then I saw this apartment here. Uh, it was actually 70,000. I signed it for 70,000. This apartment in Ayora and uh, it was so cheap that I thought I would be an idiot if I won't buy it. This flat is like 78 square meters big and it has three rooms plus a big living room and it has two balconies. It's the second floor without a lift so yeah you have to walk the stairs until the second floor. The location of the apartment is right here. So it's very close to university. It's also only 10 minutes to the beach and it's also only 15 minutes to, to the city center. So I was living in this neighborhood as well when I was studying. So I know it's very interesting for students to live here. That is why I made the plan to renovate it and rent it out to three students which uh, I will do from February on. Valencia is just a really nice town. It's the third biggest town here in Spain. This apartment is also very close to the sightseeing spot number one in Valencia, which is the Ciudad de las Ciencias, which is uh, in Turia, in this uh, green park, which goes around the center here in Valencia. So you also have the metro station directly in front of the house. So as I said, I signed the apartment for 70,000, but uh, with the commission of the real estate agency, which was 5K, taxes, the notary, the acquisition, like the transaction costed some money. I ended up paying 83,800 for just acquiring this flat. That's definitely relatively cheap here in Valencia. Apartments are not that expensive, but this is definitely very cheap for a 76 square meter apartment. With this apartment, I was really lucky that the real estate agent contacted me before he put this apartment online, because I think if he would have uploaded it on Idealista, I think it would have been gone in just a few minutes. He remembered that I was looking in this area, so I visited this flat on a Sunday and yeah, I made a really quick decision. So the next day I came again to the flat with an architect that looked on if there's any structural uh, problems with the building. So then I reserved the flat, uh, paid 5,000, which was also directly the first payment for the flat. Like a few months later, we went to the notary, signed uh, all the papers. So let's talk about the condition of the flat. Uh, when I bought it, it was terrible. It was like a messy apartment, so it was full of stuff, old stuff. I think like the whole thing was has not been touched for like 15 or 20 years. You entered here and you weren't able to move. It felt like <laughs> there's so much clutter, so much stuff that you couldn't really even move in this apartment. Then the electricity was from like 60 years old, so it definitely had to be changed. The bathroom was terrible uh, and it was super small. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the process of how I changed this. So I renovated, first of all, the bathroom, then the electricity, and then I moved on to the kitchen. First of all, I had to empty the flat. So of course, there were like several problems with this flat, like the electricity, that there was so much clutter. But I've learned that in real estate, you get paid for problem solving. And this flat definitely had a lot of problems. But if you want to have like a high return on investment, you have to be a good problem solver. And I think the only thing that you can't change of an apartment is the location and how big it is and which floor it is. And these characteristics were really good with this apartment. The location is perfect, close to university, close to the center, close to the beach. It's really big, spacious, has a lot of rooms. There's a lot of light going in. It's a second floor, so that's also doable. So even though the inside was ugly and shitty of this uh, apartment, I, I was brave enough to just say, okay, I can, I can manage this project. I can lift the value of this uh, real estate object. 
in all the clutter I found many amazing things. And then in all the stuff I found some newspapers here from the year uh, 1975 saying Franco ha muerto. Franco is dead. Uh, newspapers like this. Juan Carlos, the king of Spain. Or this newspaper. Franco ha muerto. And then I found a map here. A map that shows Europe in the year 1935. Okay, at that time Germany was still a little bit bigger. Besides, we have suits. Unfortunately, they're a little bit small. But we also got a lot of pants and a lot of ties. And then there's this really cool magazine of Bill Gates, El Dios de los Ordenadores, a magazine of El País. This is actually from the year 94. I was one year old when this was published. And another thing that I found in the flat was this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, still a bestseller from the author Dale Carnegie. So I'm gonna read that in Spanish, I guess. Another really cool thing that I found in the clutter is this box, the first Apple mouse, I think. Apple already had its Apple logo, and inside you find the instruction manual and the mouse from 1984. It was super clear that you had to change the bathroom. I got in touch with four companies who do renovations, got their quotes, how much it would cost. One convinced me the most and he, he got the job in the end. So this is what the bathroom looks like before any renovation. Old tubes, plomo it's called in Spanish. So we will throw away these two walls, we will crush them. Behind this there is a storage room of the kitchen and this way we will make the bathroom bigger because it's very small. The whole thing, the changing the electricity, changing the bathroom, changing the plumbing, the tubes, was 12,500 in the end. So this process was definitely really stressful. Uh, managing the renovation besides your normal job can be stressful. Also later when I tried to make a lot of these small jobs my on my own to save some money, like painting walls. I was painting in this, this apartment for so long because the walls were blue and I had to go over with several layers and it took me like three, three weeks. I was lucky because my girlfriend and some friends helped me from time to time. Uh, I got them over for, for a beer and we, we painted together, but it was a very long process and I think if I buy the next apartment, I won't do that myself. I would rather pay somebody else who's quicker, better, and then I don't have to do that job. So let's have a look on the kitchen transformation. This is what the kitchen looked like when I bought the flat. So everything was uh, very old. I pretty much threw away everything. There was this weird thing under the roof, uh, which I put away as well. And then I got these white modules from Ikea. Uh, I got a new white countertop and those white modules. And uh, yeah, we installed everything. So now in the kitchen you have everything in white, some wooden elements and the red floor. So I just kept the floor how it is, very typical Valencian floor. And I think it's a decent kitchen for the tenants. And this is what the apartment looks like before handing it over to the tenants. This is the entrance, the new mirror bathroom yes. and there's a small storage room over here here you have first room and I still wanted to give you an overview of the cost of the apartment so so far we are at 83,800 with the flat the agency taxes and notary and then the bathroom costed 9,600 changing the electricity was 2.5 thousand and changing the kitchen and the furniture was 4.5 thousand totaling 99,900
And now, the living room. A big room with a balcony. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the story about the first apartment that I bought in my life. Uh, it happened to be here in Spain because the apartments here are a bit more affordable and can have really high returns of investment. And actually, one year later, I bought another flat with my sister, also here in Valencia, in the same neighborhood. So it's just five minutes walking from this apartment. And uh, this one was a bit more expensive. It cost it 99,000. Uh, but we didn't have to do any renovations, so I didn't have to change the bathroom and the electricity like I had to do in this apartment here. So now we rent it out to international people and Erasmus students who look for apartments that are ready to move in. So we put in the furniture and rent it out, so we actually follow the same strategy like in this apartment. If you want to see another video about this second apartment, please let me know. And otherwise, thanks for watching and peace out.